Traveling in Turkey is awesome, but as a German there are so many things that are different or even make no sense to me. And here is my first part of things that are different in Turkey versus Germany. Not better, not worse. Here I have 18 things that are just different than I was used to it in Germany. Not better, not worse, just different. I'm here in Istanbul, feel super uncomfortable because people are watching me. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Okay, so the first thing that I have here is subtitles in cinema. It might be super normal to most of the people in the world, but in Germany it is not very usual to have subtitles in the cinema. So when I grew up, I went to the cinema as a kid, I've never seen subtitles in cinema. When I came to Turkey, the first time I went to the movies here, there were subtitles and the movie was not in Turkish, it was actually in the original language, they put Turkish subtitles. Uh, that was something new to me, never experienced this in Germany. Let's see what is next on the list. Man only cafes, yes, I think that's a big one. Um, living in Turkey, it's definitely a man dominated culture and for me it was just super weird to find cafes where it wouldn't be normal for a woman to join them. That was kind of confusing to me because in Germany you just don't think about am I allowed to go in there? Is it weird if I go in there? Will like men look at me? We just don't have it. Okay. Kitty. I think it's a big deal, men only cafes. It has a big meaning in Turkish culture. Back in the days it was very important for a man to socialize, to have a man only place. Totally understand this. I wish there were women only cafes as well. Maybe in the future. Fits very well. Call of prayer. And this is definitely something that I've never heard before in my life before I came to Turkey. And something that we should all know about the call of prayer is that whenever the muezzin is calling that you should turn off the music. So if you're playing music in your car, at home, wherever, turn off the music, it's more respectful. For me as a German who didn't grow up with the call of prayer, in the beginning it was something very magical to me. I loved hearing the call of prayer. I loved getting woken up by it, uh, waking up at 5 a.m. just to listen to the call of prayer. Especially when I was in Chanluofa last weekend, the call of prayer 5 a.m. It sounded like a song. It was so magical. Oh yes, that's a very big topic. Döner. Döner in Germany is probably the most popular fast food that you can find. You can find it in every small village, big cities everywhere. And the Döner is actually very different in Germany than here in Turkey. So when I arrived in Turkey and I had a Döner for the first time, I was shocked. I was like, this is not the Döner sandwich that I know from Germany. And I always thought that the Döner sandwich that I know in Germany is ex actually the same in Turkey, but it's absolutely different. Okay, there's a cat going crazy? Emerson! <laughs> so the German Döner was actually brought by Turkish guest workers in the early 70s to Germany and they developed the Turkish Döner to a German version of the Turkish döner. So it became a German döner sandwich where you have lots of vegetables, greens and different kind of sauces. So it's very popular in Germany, people love it. There are also different variations. You can even put feta cheese inside or potato, veggies, everything that comes to your mind, lemon and so on. So when I came to Turkey, I had a döner for the first time in my life. It was basically a dürüm with the meat some french fries and two shoe. That's it. I was disappointed because this is not what I expected. I thought I would find the different sauces, I would find the salad, the vegetables, maybe cheese, you know, everything, but it's just not like that. And the reason for that is I found out after living here for over three years is that Turkish people love the flavor of the meat. That's why the döner, you find also very many different variations here as Iskender, Dürüm, Sandwich, whatsoever. But here they focus more on the pure flavor of the meat. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. As a German, I really miss the German döner sandwich. I think it's just, uh, I love it. But I also got used to the 
um, Turkish döner, dürüm, and sandwich. <gasps> Apartments have a name. Oh yes, this is true. I was so confused for the first time when I had to write down my address here in Turkey and I had to write down so many things. The name of the mahalle, the name of my apartment, um, the number of the floor where I'm living in, so many things. We don't write this down in Germany. So in Germany, when you write down your address, you just write down your name, the street where you're living in and the street number and the city, of course, but that's it. So here in Turkey, you write so many things and this apartment is just called Halil apartment, I see Mine apartment, like all these apartments have signs with their names and I think this is something very cute. It gives the house kind of a personality, but so different than we know this in Germany. I've written down here Tekel Bakal supermarket. Yes, it's true. Here in Turkey, we have so many different kind of supermarkets where you can different kind of products. So if you want to buy alcohol, you have to go to a tackle. A tackle is basically a place where they are allowed, they have a license to sell the alcohol. If you go to a bakal, you will not, you will probably not find alcohol there, but you'll find all other kind of groceries there. And in a big supermarket, they have both. They have everything you need, also alcohol. Sometimes they do have alcohol, sometimes they don't. But here, definitely the tackle are special places where you can buy alcohol. Yogurt. Oh my God, yogurt is a very big thing here in Turkey. I didn't know before that you can combine yogurt with so many things. Here they eat yogurt with meat, they even drink yogurt as a soup. We have the yayala, yayala so we have so many dishes here that you can combine with yogurt, like Iskender. In Germany, yogurt is more like a dessert, so you don't really have it as a main dish. So this was something so unusual for me when I first came here and explored the Turkish cuisine. The basket tradition for deliveries. Oh yes, I think this is also something very unusual and uncommon in Germany. Here in Turkey, if you are an elderly person or you live on the top floor of your apartment, it's very common that you have a basket in your home and whenever you hear someone calling on the street or you have someone going down to the supermarket, that you just throw the basket down there and you can put your shopping list in there or you can tell the guy who's selling the potatoes, how many potatoes you want to have, put the money in there and then he will put the potatoes in the basket and you just uh, get it up there. I think it's very smart and it's still very common here in Turkey. I just saw it on my way here. So uh, that was this is definitely something where I realize it's a different culture. Living in the basement. Yes, this is definitely something very common for Istanbul. I'm not sure about the other cities, but when you walk in the big city, you will see that most houses have apartments in the basement. And these basement apartments also have windows that are just on the ground floor. In Germany, I don't think that we have windows in our basement apartments. So here it's just so common to have a basement apartment and people living there with windows right on the ground of the street. Pillows are smaller here and blankets are bigger. <sighs> Up until now, it really frustrates me because I still have like covers for my blankets from Germany, especially pillow covers. And the pillow covers from Germany are just too big for the pillows here. Like the first time I was here like, this pillow is so small. How am I able to feel comfortable with this? But like everything in life you will get used to it and one thing that I really love is that the blankets in contrast to that are way bigger here so the blankets here for one person start at 155 centimeters in Germany they are only 135 centimeters so there are like it's like a 20 centimeter difference and I love this because I love to have big blankets and whenever I go back to Germany I'm like oh my god how can they sleep with this tiny blankets yeah it's just different bitter chai in Germany we don't really have a big tea culture so when we drink tea we usually drink like fruit kind of teas or we add sugar to it but here in Turkey chai is chai 
chai belongs to the daily life and especially black tea. In Germany I would say black tea is not very common. We don't really like to drink just black tea. Here in Turkey every single day they start their day with a black tea with chai. It's not like on the bazaar as a tourist when you come here you get like this sweet apple tea. So I was like this is the Turkish tea but actually it's the black tea and you have to get used to it. Pistachio on every dessert. Yes, this is absolutely true. Something that is just different to Germany. We also have pistachio in Germany, but here it's very dominant in the desserts. We have baklava, kunefe, lokum, halva. On all these desserts, you can find pistachio. And if there's no pistachio in the dessert, is it really a dessert? I don't think so. Pistachio, super important in Turkish cuisine. Cardboard police cars. <laughs> I remember the first time when I was driving in Turkey and I saw a cardboard police car from the distance. I was like, oh no, this is a real police car. So when you get closer, you realize it's not real, actually a real police car, but it just looks so real when you've seen it for the first time. And still, after three years living here, I still get confused when I see the cardboard police cars. I've never seen this in Germany and I think it is kind of smart to put this there. It's very effective for new drivers. Not so sure about the drivers that know where these cardboards are, but it's definitely a very cost effective way of making sure the speed limit is respected. The color of sausages. Okay, this is just a small one, but in Germany we have lots of different kind of sausages, but there is one sausage that we do not have in Germany and that's like a very very red colored sausage and here in turkey i mostly see like these red colored sausages it's just, it's just so weird looking to me um i'm actually a bit afraid of trying these sausages because this red color looks just so unnatural to me in germany we have to me it's a more natural color for turks it might be unnatural i don't know but the sausages colors here <laughs> i'm afraid of the sausages French fries for breakfast. Breakfast in Turkey is amazing. They have so many different things for breakfast, especially tomatoes, cheese, cucumbers, olives, and so on. Super healthy breakfast, but they have French fries. I don't get it. Why do you eat French fries for breakfast? It's not a breakfast dish. It's like a side dish for your lunch or for your dinner. But for breakfast, really? I don't get it. One sentence can be one word. Oh yes, the Turkish language is definitely very, very different from European languages. You can form a whole sentence and in the end it will just be one word. For example, saying Berlin Liam means I'm from Berlin. So instead of using three words or in German, ich bin aus Berlin, four words, in Turkish it's only one word, Berlin Liam. And I think this is super interesting. It makes learning Turkish so much fun. I think it's a very interesting concept. It makes your brain work in different ways and I really love this about the Turkish language. Paying the postman. So this is something that was super weird to me when I came to Turkey because in Germany the postman is just the postman. He delivers your package and that's his job. But here in Turkey the postman has so many different duties like he has to make sure you are paying the taxes, he has to make sure that you're even paying the product. So sometimes you can choose when you are checking out and uh, ordering something online, paying cash to the postman. And I think this is very inclusive for people who maybe don't have a bank account or for people who prefer to pay cash. It's definitely a very good way to um, offer different payment options. Okay, no toast machines, just sandwich makers. This was so confusing to me when I came to Turkey because in Germany it's very common to have a toast machine and a toast machine is in every single German household. But here in Turkey I've probably never ever seen a toast machine. You just see these sandwich makers and they basically use it as a toast machine but they also use it to cook their meat. They use it for basically everything. Toast machines. I need a toast machine. Um, also, it's just not common here. Water is sejak or soak versus sparkling water in Germany. 
Yes. Here in Turkey, when you order water, they will probably ask you, do you want this cold or warm? And in Germany, they will not ask you this question. They will just ask you, which pudel oder ohne? So they will ask you, do you want sparkling water or not? I really miss sparkling water. Here in Turkey, they have sparkling water in like these small bottles. It feels like more fancy to drink sparkling water. Here it's also more expensive than normal water. In Germany, it's the same price. So I feel like if you drink sparkling water here, it's like a luxury kind of water to drink. Uh, yeah, it's very different than in Germany as it's just equal to normal water. Kitty, up your son. I believe that this list could go on forever and ever and also there are so many other things for, for other foreigners from other countries probably. But for me these are the main things that are just so different for me than in Germany. Not worse, not better. I also made a list about what's worse here and what I think tur in Turkey is so much more better and brilliant ideas. This will be part two and part three. So I hope you liked the video and I'll see you next time from another province I guess. Thank <laughs> you.